Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is the last topic within our energy unit. Uh, we're gonna talk about the heating curve of water. Okay, this is a typical heating curve. What is shown here is temperature along our y-axis. We can see it, it goes from a little bit below zero degrees Celsius up to about 100 degrees Celsius and a little bit above that. On the x-axis, we have our heat energy added over a period of time. So we have heat energy added and it just keeps going and going. And as you can see, it just goes right off and into it. R, this is our heating curve of water. So we're showing the addition of heat over a period of time with a change in temperature. We could also do a reverse of this curve too and it would look almost the exact opposite way. Now, what we have here is we're down here all the way below zero degrees Celsius. And with the addition of heat, we see the temperature goes up. Now, water below zero degrees is going to be a solid. So we have a solid at below zero degrees. And then what we notice is that the temperature remains constant with the addition of heat. And then our temperature all of a sudden starts to rise up and keep going. And you notice it goes to 100 degrees Celsius. So water between zero and 100 degrees Celsius is a liquid as we know it. We get to about 100 degrees Celsius. We have once again, no change of temperature for a while. And then the temperature starts to increase. Here at above 100 degrees Celsius, we have a gas. So we have solid below zero degrees Celsius, between zero and 100 degrees Celsius, we have a liquid, and then gas above. These plateaus, our flat areas right here, are extremely important. These are where we have phase changes. So if we go from a solid to a liquid, that is our melting. And here, when we go from liquid to a gas, where there's no change in temperature, that is vaporization. Okay. We could do the reverse of all this. We can remove heat and the exact when we go from a gas to a liquid, that's condensation. And over here is freezing. As we go from a liquid to a solid, these plateaus are extremely important areas. These, the plateaus are our phase changes. Only where we see an increase in temperature right there and there and there, those are gonna be the phases. Now right here, as we go from solid to liquid during either the melting or freezing same, no change in temperature, and there may be water and ice existing in the same system. Just like right here, we're gonna have liquid and gas existing during the same system. Okay, so we have our energy ladder. So we go from solid liquid to gas to go up from these, takes system, um, sorry, the system takes energy. To go from gas liquid to solid, the system gives off or releases energy. Okay, and that brings us to latent heat. And this is gonna come back to those plateaus we were looking at at the heating curve. Okay, latent heat is that flows to or from a material without a change in temperature. The heat will only change the phase of the material. So if we go back to our heating curve, and we go up, plateau, increase in temperature, plateau, and up, these areas right here and here is where there's latent heat. Okay, uh, we can open up into our reference table. So we go. Let's take a look at that. Okay, we're taking a look at a reference table and we're gonna to go to the cover of the reference table and we look down and we're going to see properties of water right here towards the middle of the cover of our earth science reference table. You can see heat energy gained during melting, 334 joules per gram. Joules per gram, okay? Heat energy released during freezing, 334 joules per gram. Notice that they're the same because they exist on the same plateau. 
One's only addition or one's the release of energy. Heat energy gained during vaporization, 2,260 joules per gram. Likewise, also for condensation. Okay, so right here, just back to this, we are on page one of the reference table. And another little thing to consider is the problem from the point of view of the system. Are we releasing energy from the system or putting energy into the system? Like the energy ladder we saw on the previous slides. Okay, a couple of terms to know. Heat of fusion, like we got from the cover of the reference table, is 334 joules per gram. Heat of vaporization, 2,260 joules per gram. Notice it doesn't matter if you're adding or releasing energy. Here are some phase change questions. Which phase change releases or loses energy? So for that, we can go to our reference table. Okay, we're looking for releasing or losing energy. And go back to page one, and we can see here, heat energy released and heat energy released. So that would be condensation or freezing. Getting back from the reference table, we saw that it was either condensation or freezing. Which phase change releases the most energy? That you can do on your own. ESRT, page one. And I will leave these to you also. Remember, we are looking at the Earth Science Reference Table, page one. That is the end of our energy unit, where we just finished up with the heating curve of water, talking about latent heat and heat of fusion. Hope you've enjoyed it. Goodbye.